78 degrees, I think, was one of my It was amazing. Something thermally with this carbon fiber is amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where the heat goes, but it gets rid of it. Yep. And so we would have one side of this at 200 degrees, the other side, and this this is some uh, almost quarter inch. The stuff we were using was, was an eighth of an inch. It was thinner, yeah. And it was um, wicking that heat away so fast that the outside would be at room temperature. Yeah, it was cool to the touch on the outside. It was great. An eighth of an inch away. Right. So I'm kind of fascinated with the material. It does give you some strength and it's very light. We are building this plate. Uh, I'm a little weight conscious these days. <laughs> Pace to stay trim. Jenny Craig. <laughs> oh, I should have made a shameless plug there. <laughs> we, we've put a whole lot of batteries in there. And we're, uh, we're going to be heavy. Uh, basically, with this battery pack in this car, I would guess um, a mile of range per 40 pounds. Per 40. Yeah, I think that's what, yeah. Maybe 50 Maybe, maybe 50, yeah. We, in other words, if I can save 50 pounds. Get a mile. We get a mile. Get a mile of range. And uh, so that's why we kind of carefully trimmed the uh, adapter plate and lost 35 pounds. Right. Yes. Um, instead of just leaving it with the square, which would have worked fine. Um, and this, we, we may wind up having to replace it with steel. Uh, right. We whack one fire hydrant and uh, this thing may <laughs> not it. hold. Yeah, that's right. Or maybe it will. What I did was made a sandwich. This is a 6061 aluminum plate, 0.090. It's strong, it's stiff. But a 12 inch wide piece, 36 inches long, carrying uh, yeah. objects, it, it's got a pretty good bow. It's got some sack. So I need to stiffen it up. Yeah. What I did was took uh, two pieces of the 6061 and made a sandwich with the carbon fiber honeycomb and the 6061 and simply bolted them together with some little quarter mm -hmm. inch, three quarter um, bolts. Okay. Yeah, little bolts right here. Uh, I've already got this painted. Now, I'm not too sure about the edge of this. It looks like paper. I'm not sure what the material is. So I went around and just dabbed on some five minute epoxy mm. to that kind of seal it out. Sealed it up pretty the, good, yeah. From the elements and then painted it a delightful uh, John Deere green. It, well, we had a can of it. <laughs> out of a spray can. And so made our our little device here. But it's basically a sandwich of this carbon fiber material, which is, by the way, very expensive. That's about $80 worth in that uh, mm -hmm. thing there. And the 6061, which they don't give away. And it may not be strong. It'll hold our equipment and stuff, but if we bash a right. puppy dog or something, uh, it, it, I'm not too sure it'll hold. But it's very light and quite stiff sandwich. The thermal properties don't do us any good at all in this case, but they're just kind of fun. Um, so what we did was make this uh, thing. It's 12 inches deep and 36 inches wide. I want to show you a couple of things. This is a little cutout for the, uh, this will be on the right side of the car. This will be toward the front. And it'll angle about like that. So that's why I'm concerned about things hitting it and weather and so forth. Um, but we have a little cutout here. This is to accommodate um, that radiator. It's the lower. The stock lower radiator outlet. Lower radiator hole. Yeah. And in putting this together, it's just easier to mount this stuff on the bench. So we might as well talk about it a little bit. This is, uh, do they pronounce this Messier or Messier? You know, I don't know. I, there's, I don't know if anyone really knows. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, it's a water pump, and they make uh, some of the best pumps in the business, primarily for uh, race cars. We got this at Summit Racing. Mm -hmm. It's a couple or $300. And we have Bosch pumps uh, that you can get on right. eBay right. that would work fine and they're $95. Yeah, we've got an Italian pump, the Bosch. We've, we've got four, maybe four different pumps that we're right. we've, could play we've with. We've looked at a bunch of pumps in the racing world, um, and we've gone to Summit Racing for a lot of these parts. You can get all these cool fittings. This is a little 
AN8 uh, fitting that goes on our pump. Yeah, they've got them on all the angles, too. 90 degrees, 90, 45, 45 degrees, straight, straights. straights. Yeah, they've got plenty. black, blue, silver, or chrome, chrome all red, kinds red, of really pink. nice fittings. This uh, particular one, you put a piece of braided hose in it. And we'll show you how to do this when we hook it all up. Um, you put the uh, slip this on the hose and this on here and screw it down and you have a fitting that just, it just about cannot leak or come loose. No, it, it takes a lot and this is all air aircraft. Uh, I'm like Elmer Fudd having problems with my arms. It's all aircraft uh, quality lines. This is good stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna use braided steel um, sheathed rubber hoses and these kind of fittings and hook up our controller and our uh, motor in that way. But we need a pump at the heart of the system right. to clear air in the lines. The best thing is to put the pump at the bottom. And right. so we're gonna have it with the connected directly to the lower um, connection on the radiator. Right. And so we had to make this cut out. We put a little piece of rubber between this. Uh, the other thing I like about the Mizier, they have two mounting holes threaded in it and yeah. so we stuck a couple bolts up through it and it's a very solid mount and with that rubber you're never going to hear this thing yeah, it's isolated real that's isolated nicely it's a, a very quiet pump rated for 30,000 hours of operation the other thing I don't want to do is um, um, have the pump go yeah, we don't want to be replacing this and that's why we kept looking at little pumps um, that Bosch um, right. would work fine. Yeah, a lot of them, they refer to all different applications, motorcycles, uh, different industrial applications, but this is, this is a big boy. This is pretty deluxe, but it's, I think it was about $350. It, it's overkill. Yeah, this it's is, a lot of pump. This is over the top. But, you know, that's what I, what I decided to put in here. So this is our Master Flux electric air conditioner compressor. This is a pretty neat little device. Uh, it'll run on pack voltage, in our case, uh, about 375, 375 volts. Yes. Um, and it will uh, do anywhere from 8,000 to 14,000 BTUs and has its own controller, a little uh, three-phase controller, right. incidentally, uh, not much different than the one we're using to drive the car. Um, I think this was what fifteen hundred or seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's for the they're kit. pretty proud so of it. Yeah. Um, there's some other options, but this one's a pretty good one. It's small. On eBay, I actually picked up an air conditioning compressor from a Toyota Prius that is also an electric air conditioner, um, and uh, it's uh, they're starting to become available in the used parts thing. Um, it needs a three-phase controller, controller that I didn't get, but yeah. it was only $350. It's an option, but the thing is this big. This is very small. Um, it, it's, uh, we can tune it with the controller, mm -hmm. which you would be able to on the Prius uh, compressor as well. But in this way, uh, we can, with a potentiometer, change this um, to operate... Uh, at, at a, in a kind of a wide range of uh, outputs to match our uh, air conditioning system. We'll have a local shop hook up the connections to the lines and our evaporator. We'll do the electrical connection and kind of tune this to right. where we don't we're ice up our heat ice. exchanger right. in the car or uh, <laughs> you know, the lines and so forth that are making enough uh, to uh, cool the car. And uh, so, so this is a nice, small, lightweight package. Um, again, a little bit pricey. Um, but it comes with uh, a rubber shock mount anyway, and we just put some quarter-inch bolts through there. Um, this uh, pulse-width modulation of little motors, yes. I'm gonna wire this up to one of Brian's uh, toggle switches in the car for the moment. When we get the car completed, and by completed, I mean kind of buttoned up and running, right. uh, that's not really the end of it. We have to steal some signals and start marrying it in a little closer with the systems, the CAN bus that's and so forth. Much, on the yeah, car. As much as we can or it's transparent. 
This one I've got special plans for. We're going to have it on a toggle switch to, to start with, but we're probably going to do a little microcontroller with a uh, temperature probe, uh, again, uh, an Arduino. And these, these guys that are trying to get the extra mileage with the hydrogen oh, off their off alternator. Their yes. Oh, man. I had another conversation with a guy this week. He's just sure he's getting 1,000 miles a gallon. Oh, man. And it, it's, it's just not so. You cannot make hydrogen with electricity off your alternator. Uh, 